Hello, I'm David Rowan from Wired Magazine, and I want us to celebrate bad design. So you're all very cool media types, and you probably think everything's about shiny good design. But look at the truths you get when there is genuinely bad design. This is a magazine that was out just a couple of months ago. It tells the truth. Let's celebrate the people who use the tools that enable bad design. Photoshop, first among them. If anybody can tell me where the other leg to this one belongs, you'll be a finalist. If you're designing a logo for a pediatric children's center in Virginia, you want to show your close relationship with the children. The tools allow that kind of bad design that tells that kind of truth. We're going on to typography now. This is in North Carolina. Sometimes you don't need to fill the full 15 seconds. Now, sometimes bad design can be used for evil, admittedly. Now, if you look at the Ryanair website, and when you're trying to find that box to click no to their insurance offer, the no, I don't want insurance is hidden among 17 other countries. Sometimes, Bad design isn't detected for a couple of decades. So in 1967, the US Navy built this base in San Diego, and it was only in 2005, after Google Earth allowed people to see it was a swastika, that the US Navy said, we didn't know that, $600,000 to rebuild. Now, there's a couple of downsides. Sometimes bad design can cost you money. So a guy called Jared Spool was asked to work on a corporate website where they were not getting enough click-throughs, and he found out just before the buy, they asked you to register. He worked out it's costing them $300 million. Sometimes you can actually improve design with research, with A-B testing. That's not a good thing for our awards. So the Obama campaign last election changed from the first having A-B tested 24 versions to this, and they found that the click-through rate to join went up from about eight and a quarter percent to almost 12%, and they found that they got an extra $60 million effectively in donations. Now, the other downside is sometimes bad design does kill people. So this is the kind of airplane that John Denver died in about 15 years ago. And it was interface design that killed him. It was because the fuel gauge was way behind him. He had to use a mirror to look in there, and it seemed twice as much fuel as there was. And sometimes bad design like this road in South London kills people. A guy called Gary Mason died here. If you can work out where you're meant to be turning, but apart from the guy dying, it's great bad design. But the ultimate killer in bad design is PowerPoint. Sorry, guys. 2003, January, Space Shuttle Columbia takes off. A few seconds after launch, a tile falls off. People didn't realize it was causing a minor hole in the wing. Boeing engineers used PowerPoint to do an instant report to warn what had gone wrong. Can you see the nested layers, the impossibility to see what the priorities were. They saw there was this problem with the tile, but that message never got through, and these people died. Edward Tufte made a famous presentation about this. PowerPoint is a killer. But apart from those details like killing people and not making money, bad design enhances our roads, our physical environment. I want to see more of this. I want you to help Join the revolution. Thank you.